Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. All the money in the world arrives in theaters as something of a miracle. Call it a Christmas miracle because it does arrive on Christmas Day. I call it a miracle not because of its content, but because of the unprecedented last minute turmoil behind the scenes. You see, this movie was all done for all intents and purposes, shot, edited, scored, and in final preparations for release way back in October. Kevin Spacey was even getting Oscar buzz for his juicy supporting role under thick old age makeup as J. Paul Getty. And then the world started to get wind of some very serious and potentially criminal allegations about Spacey, which made him an albatross overnight. I won't get into what he was accused of, only that, if true, it would dissuade anyone from ever seeing Kevin Spacey in movies or on television again. Immediately, he was bounced from his hit Netflix show House of Cards, and all upcoming projects featuring Spacey as either an actor or a producer were immediately put on hold. Except the thing is, this movie, all the money in the world, well, like I say, it was, it was all done. It cost millions of dollars and represented the work of hundreds of people, and it was more or less all complete. So director Ridley Scott did the unthinkable. He secured permission from the studio to immediately reshoot all of Spacey's scenes over a period of just nine days at the end of this November. This time with master thespian Christopher Plummer as Getty. Stars Mark Wahlberg and Michelle Williams came back to reshoot their scenes for free over Thanksgiving weekend, no less, and the footage was integrated into the final edit as they shot it, and the movie was finished just over a week later. Whew! The studio delayed the release of the film by only three days, and finally would release it on December 25th. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. In less than a month, we have virtually the same movie that we would have had, scene for scene, only without Kevin Spacey. Now we have a movie that we can enjoy without hand wringing over whether or not to see it, or without the cloud of controversy hanging over it for all time. So, without the controversy hanging over it, and without admiring what an impressive achievement the recasting of a major role was, just purely on its own merits, how is all the money in the world? Oh, it's a good movie, all right. A very solid, well-told drama that really draws you in and tells its story with efficiency. It's also, as you can imply by the title, a meditation on greed, privilege, and the difficulty of, as Getty points out in one scene, not just getting rich, but being rich. It's a lot more complex than you'd imagine and affects every facet of your life and the lives of those around you. The story involves the famous kidnapping of J. Paul Getty III, the grandson of the richest man in the world, J. Paul Getty Sr. Although he is heir to a fortune, Paul doesn't have much of a relationship with his rich grandfather, who is presumably too busy making money to spend time with his family. And that includes Paul's absentee father, who has fallen victim to the lure of drugs and limitless partying. That leaves young Paul under the care of his mother, Gail, and she is portrayed with a sort of fraying nobility by Michelle Williams. Here is a woman that never cared about the money, never sought a dime for herself, and is motivated purely by maternal love and the need to keep her children safe. This is almost impossible to believe for the hardened, ambitious Getty Sr. who has had people hitting him up for a piece of his fortune left and right for years. As a result, this ruthless negotiator can't even conceive of any other stakes but financial ones, and Gale's passion just boggles his mind and even makes him suspicious of Gale. I honestly can't say enough about how great Christopher Plummer is in this role. Forget the novelty of the story and how he came to play it, he is just magnificent here, full stop. When you see the original trailer featuring Spacey in heavy old age makeup, it makes you wonder why they didn't just go and hire an actual old guy like Plummer in the first place. We shouldn't compare the work of one actor to another, especially since we'll never be able to see the full version of the movie that included Kevin Spacey, but this version doesn't really make you want to see that version, other than perhaps as an intellectual curiosity for film students. Plummer, as Getty, puts on a hell of a show. You admire him, then you judge him, then you may ultimately pity him. But with the map of the world written on his grizzled face, all underscored by a knowing twinkle in his eye, you won't be able to imagine anyone else but Plummer in the role. Ah, but back to the movie as a whole. After all that, I award all the money in the world a large bag of popcorn. It's everything you need a movie like this to be. Suspenseful, full of twists, especially if you're not familiar with the real life events. Some marvelous acting and a real sense of time and place. I found myself riveted for the majority of this movie's running time, and any parent, no matter rich or poor, will find plenty to fuel their nightmares here. Ridley Scott has long been making escapist films, those that make you forget your troubles for a few hours. Well, with this film, he's not only managed to make you forget your own troubles, but the movie's behind-the-scenes troubles as well. That makes this movie a remarkable achievement for all involved. Oh, except Kevin Spacey, 
of course. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on all the money in the world and also about its behind the scenes turmoil in the comments as well. Do you think they did the right thing? Well, let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I'm from another planet where the force of gravity is so strong it bends the light. <laughs>